started in California. Uh, it was, it was in, uh, initiated by the president of Hewlett Packard at that time. They started in 1970. In 1976, uh, Johns Hopkins applied, University Applied Physics Lab decided to implement the program in the state of Maryland. We started with two schools in Baltimore City, uh, and now we are uh, in 159 schools in the state of Maryland. It's schools and we presently have over 3,000 students. Uh, one, one thing that makes us unique, and I'll take things. We are dedicated to uh, developing a whole STEM student. Uh, that means we're looking for students to go into any STEM career. And we actually start and especially for the minority students, the underrepresented population, but MESA itself is open to all students. We start in, let me go back, <laughs> get myself together again. Okay, it is MESA USA and we are in eight states presently. And we have over 35,000 students uh, throughout the country. I'm gonna click through that. We were recognized from the Benjamin Banneker Institute last year for the most outstanding uh, youth organization for promoting STEM among minorities uh, and underrepresented population. So that was a true honor. This is just a map to give you an idea of where we are presently located uh, throughout the state of Maryland. Our strongest uh, programs are in Calvert County, uh, St. Mary's County, Howard County, Montgomery County, uh, Baltimore County. Presently, our population for the African American population is at 42%, which is pretty good for a STEM program. And as far as gender, 47% uh, are female. So we feel like we're doing a good job and we're staying true to our mission. We know that in 2007, uh, we had at least 86% of the students going into STEM and 66% were attending Maryland colleges and universities. And our students are also seem to be scoring higher in the math area than the GT students, which is your gifted and talented, and that's what we've been measuring against. We have a central office at Hopkins, uh, myself and Mary Kumar on primary contact. Uh, she's my operations manager, and pretty much I go out and do this. We work with the regional, uh, with the regions, with the superintendents, uh, and the, we have 10 regional coordinators. Uh, we work with the principals. Uh, presently, we have about 300 school-based coordinators. Uh, the parents are very involved, uh, and students seem to love the program. Our students, we, our program begins in elementary school. We focus on schools that feed into, where most of the students feed into a middle, then feed into the high school. So, from the elementary school, they are doing, it is an after school program, so they are doing activities, applied activities. Uh, then they move into the middle school, the activities become a little more rigorous. Then they move into the high school, and we have more rigor. And all of this is leading back to them going into college or technical training. Because one thing that you don't hear enough of is, that like at APL, we need machinists. We cannot find them. Okay, we need everything. When you are dealing with government agencies that require a security clearance, we are a in-house package. And that is one message that I find is not getting out to the students, how important it is that they stay focused 
so we can qualify for the security clearance and step into these positions. You know, we're hiring. I know the Naval Warfare Center is hiring. NASA is hiring. Uh, so the idea is to introduce these students early, getting them focused, understanding and hearing the words about uh, security clearance, and then being able to step in those positions. These are our partners that we have that support us. The one thing, we are in uh, Maryland state-aided institution. Uh, we are unique because all of the funding that Mesa receives goes directly to the students. There are no administrative costs taken out of any of our funding. So the program provides ongoing support in the region. Uh, we do coordinated training and professional developments for our teachers. We provide field trips for the students, scholarships, and we have uh, competitions. We have ongoing events. We are going to have seven camps this summer. Uh, we provide the tours and the pre-college. So we have regional competitions. Then we move to the statewide, and then we move to the national competition. This year is going to be in Denver. So all of the activities move, are focused around problem solving and analyzing, collaboration and team building. Many of our schools have the Project Lead the Way. Of course, we take 20 students every year to the NSBE uh, conference. So we are working with all of the uh, professional organizations because it is important that the students learn how to become a part of their professional organization while they are still students. The students also have access to STEM professionals and we provide professional development for the teachers. So what's next? This is what we've been doing. Now we're going to be expanding our programs in the state of Maryland. We are expanding it to the community college, but Lisa will just give you a brief overview of that. We're also going to be span, expanding our signature program, and I'm going to let Toby, I'm going to let them have my time <laughs> for that. Um, and we're enhancing our competition challenges, because the one thing we know is that if you have, like, the cargo plane, so we're in the middle school, if you have a cargo plane and the middle school students building it, they're, they're, it's infectious, so they're caught. What are they going to do with it? The idea is that they would move into high school and start to build an unmanned aerial vehicle. Then from that, they would go and see uh, the colleges that are competing in the area, and then hopefully they will move into that. So right now, we're promoting the Mason students as a pipeline for our partners. Uh, we're establishing stronger partnerships so that our students have internships and mentorships. Uh, we're always seeking volunteers, and just so you know, we have a competition April the 30th at Morgan State, and we're still looking for judges. <laughs> we will continue with our APL tours, but also taking the students to other uh, sites of interest, and we are enriching our summer programs. And our summer programs are space-focused programs, so the students are uh, constructing and launching rockets, or they are going to be doing the Lego Mindstorm, or they're going to be doing the Sea Purge. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Lisa, Dr. Cabello, and then uh, Toby will speak. The water has finally arrived. Those people are hard. <laughs> Goodness gracious. We, we thought that it would be in the setup, but it turns out that they have discontinued Green pictures of water, and we now have to purchase. Oh I know, big wide mouth um, bottles of water, but we couldn't have you sitting here, so we had them deliver a case. Well, it's very good to be here. I'm Lisa Carvalho, and I'm from Montgomery College. And one of the interesting things, I was the, um, the regional um, coordinator for Mesa for several years. And, um, you know, the budget just started to get cut and cut and cut, and it's particularly just for after-school programs. So we were, you know, 
collaborating and uh, you know we realized that one of the ways that we can